Hello, hello, everybody. It's your boy Prof Chow. We're back. Fuck. Again, we don't have to video. Anyway, this is the craziest dictator you've never heard of. How do you. Juan? Is it Juan or is it Jean? I assume it's Juan Pedro Bocasa. I have no idea. Let's see. From Nigeria's Sunny Abacha to Liberia's Charles Taylor, and you. I don't know about any of these people. Uganda's Idi Amin. There is no denying that Africa has had more than its fair share of ruthless dictators. Now, while the crazy antics of the likes of Mobutu and Idi Amin are generally Mobutu? quite well known, one man whose story is very rarely spoken of is Jean Bedel Bokassa of oh, the Central Jean. African Republic. A man whose obsession with all things European led to one of the most embarrassing oh, no. demonstrations of the kind of self-defeating mindset. Hey bro, what the fuck is... Please tell me that's not real gold. It's probably the real gold, isn't within it? the African elite for the best part of the last century. Damn. <laughs> A former officer in the French army, Jean Bedel Bocassa, in the French seized army. power in 1966 after a successful military overthrow of the Central African Republic's first president, David Dako. Ripping apart the country's first constitution, Bokassa immediately appointed himself president. Six years later, in 1972, he declared himself president for life. Bro and just two years after that, he declared... Bro, this is some tropical shit. This is some stuff you do in a tropical, a, a video game, my guy, not in real life. He declared himself Marshal of the Republic. You see, Jean Bedel Bokassa was a man obsessed with two things, grandiose titles and all things French. <sighs> One of Bokassa's biggest idols right. was Napoleon. If he's obsessed by all things French, why didn't he stay in France? <laughs> I'm a little confused, my guy. Napoleon Bonaparte. And just as Napoleon converted the French Revolutionary Republic to the French Empire in 1804, Bokassa decided that he was going to convert his Central African Republic into the Central African Empire. During a presidential visit in 1976, Bokassa told then French President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing of his plans to celebrate the establishment of a Central African Empire with a lavish coronation ceremony. According to Bokassa, the creation of a monarchy would help elevate the Central African Republic's influence in the continent okay. and also enhance its position on the world stage. Bokassa asked the French President for financial assistance in organizing the event. But Damn, the French President's big as... Is he huge or is everyone else small? By the way, this dude looks like he's a... Uh... Uh, one of those, uh, 007 agent type motherfuckers. Looks like he's about to, look at him. Looks like it's about to pull a shank and stab the president. Despite being initially resistant Carl. to the idea, Jiska Desta ultimately Whatever. agreed to support Bokassa for a number of reasons. Firstly, he did not want to risk jeopardizing France's major role in the country's uranium and diamond mining industry. Okay. Secondly, France had a major interest in maintaining good relations with the Central African Republic, which alongside Gabon and Zaire, Gabon. formed the bedrock of French policy in Central Africa. Bokassa's alleged growing relationship with the anti-France Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi was also another source of anxiety for Giscard d'Estaing. And all things considered, he allegedly agreed to fund Bokassa's coronation in exchange for him cutting ties with Gaddafi and guaranteeing continued French access to the country's uranium and diamond mines. With the financial backing of the French government, Bokassa's grand coronation Wait. would take place on the. F Did this fucking guy just sell off most of his, of the country he rules, you know, exports, for a lavish coronation? Fourth of December, nineteen seventy-seven, a date he chose as it marked the one hundred and seventy-third anniversary of Napoleon's grand coronation in eighteen o four. Bokassa's coronation would cost an estimated $30 million, Oof. which amounted to just over one quarter of the government's annual budget and would ultimately go down as one of the most wasteful and embarrassing. Oi! Over a quarter of the government's annual budget. It's an event in African history. In preparation really? for the event, a government committee was set up to completely transform the country's capital of Bangui. The streets were scrubbed clean, old buildings were repainted, and beggars were driven out of sight. <laughs> Renowned French sculptor Olivier Brees was commissioned to design Bokassa's imperial throne, and a team of 30 French artisans were hired to build the gold-plated bronze throne worth an estimated $2.5 million. Jesus. Eight white horses were imported from Belgium to pull Bokassa's royal carriage, which was sourced from the south of what? France. And over Bro, he looks like a kid inside of the carriage. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a kid inside of this. What? This <laughs> royal carriage, which was sourced from the south of France, and over a dozen more horses were imported from the French city of Normandy 
to carry the royal horsemen that accompanied his carriage. The very same 200-year-old French company that had embroidered Napoleon's uniforms was commissioned to create Bocasa's coronation attire in association with Italian-French designer Pierre Cardin. 13 different outfits were ordered, costing a total of $145,000. Bocasa's coronation gown alone reportedly cost over $72,000, and his Damn. imperial crown was produced by a French jeweler which was founded under the reign of Napoleon. Along with his imperial scepter and sword, and other bits and pieces, Bokasa reportedly spent around $5 million just on jewelry Oi. to ensure that his guests were driven around the city of Bangui in style and comfort. Oi. 60 brand new Mercedes-Benz vehicles were ordered from Germany. But as the Central African Republic is a landlocked country, the cars had to be first shipped to neighboring Cameroon before being flown over the Central African forest to the country's capital of Bangui at a cost of $5,000 per vehicle. vehicle. Bokasa wanted okay, when was this? Wait, current. when was this? This was in the 90s. 1900s, right? 19 something, the start? How much was this like? 50, 100k? Hirohito of Japan Nowadays. and Iran's Shah coronation. And his first invitees were fellow emperors Hirohito of Japan and Iran's Shah Reza Pahlavi. But unfortunately for him, people. both emperors declined to attend, as oh. did the many other reigning monarchs on the official guest list. Oh. Not a single president attended Wait, the event, and all other African leaders, with the exception of the Prime Minister of Mauritius, refused to attend the event. Wow. Reflecting on the rather disappointing turnout, Bokasa would later be quoted as saying that the other African leaders were simply jealous of him because he had an empire and they didn't. Bro, how many badges do you have? Jesus Christ, look at them. Even the French president Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, to the surprise of many, also refused to attend. Uh of the 2500 international Bro. dignitaries that were invited how are you gonna how are you gonna fund this and not uh, go there only 600 accepted the invitation wow on the day of the event the procession began with eight of bokasa's 29 children leading the parade they were then followed by jean bedel bokasa the whoa, whoa wait on the day of the event the procession began with eight of bokasa's 29 children leading Bro. Bro, this dude waving sperm around like nobody's business. What do you mean 28 children? How many? One wife? 15 wives? How As many wives? Nine children leading the parade. They were then followed by Jean Bedel Bokassa II, the heir to the throne, who was dressed in a white admiral's uniform. Catherine Dengwande, the Wait, favorite and an among Bokassa's nine wives, then walked up oh, to the throne. Oh, okay, to okay, the okay. Nine wives makes more sense i was like jesus christ if if he if one uh, if one woman gave birth to 28 children jesus christ she can fit a watermelon down there but nine wives okay Empress of central Fair africa enough. just before pokasa himself was invited to walk across the 80 meter red carpet for his official coronation despite the tropical heat did she bleach her face what the fuck's wrong with her face pokasa was dressed in a floor length velvet gown Decorated with 785,000 tiny pearls. Bro, he's and got a carpet. Million crystal beads across his bro he's got a carpet cape. My guy has a carpet cape. Where does it go? From uh, Africa to France? Bro, he wore a golden laurel just like his hero Napoleon. Bro. When it was time for the official coronation, Bokasa removed his golden... What else did he do just like Napoleon? Did he fail an invasion of uh, Russia as well? Laurel and placed the emperor's crown on his own head exactly as his hero napoleon had done at his coronation back in 1804 with the crown on his head he was then presented with a gold-plated sword along with a huge diamond scepter and at exactly 10 43 a.m on december the 4th 1977 jean bedel bocassa was officially proclaimed yeah. emperor of central africa by the will of the central african people united within the national political party the movement for the social evolution of black africa by the end of this shameful coronation, Bokasa had spent the equivalent of one quarter of the empire's annual budget just on his coronation. With Damn. the ceremony, Bokasa had wanted to make a name for himself, and in this respect, the coronation was a huge success. His moment of glory was widely reported, although not necessarily in the way he would have liked. <laughs> yeah. Images of his coronation were splattered across newspapers and TV sets around the world whoa, to the whoa. eternal emb Cannibalism? Capris and pomp? Indirect portrait of an emperor with cannibalism. Embarrassment of his countrymen Jeez. and his continent. 
But while it's very easy to dismiss the actions of Jean Bedel Bokassa as yet another case of an African dictator with more power than sense, his story is actually a very sad case study on the kind of defeated mindset that has plagued many of Africa's post-colonial leaders. You see, long before his rise to power, Bokassa witnessed firsthand the brutal impact of French empire building. His father, Minogdon Bokassa, was killed for staging a village rebellion against the French colonial authorities, and at the tender age of six, Jean Bedel Bokassa witnessed his own father's death at the hands of the French colonial authorities. Mm. His devastated mother was reported to have committed Damn. suicide just one week later, leaving behind Twelve Jean Bedel Bokassa and his 11 siblings. Jeez. But rather than turn him against the French authorities, this traumatic experience may have had the opposite effect on Bokassa, as it seemed to ingrain it. Bruh, why does this dude look like he's gonna be sleeping on the couch tonight? <laughs> look, look at his wife deep-seated inferiority complex that ultimately manifested itself in a maniacal obsession with French imperialism, which was embodied in his love for Napoleon Bonaparte. From the age of 18, Bokassa would dedicate his life to furthering French interests, as he joined the French Free Forces and fought for the French government on deployments to Indochina and Algeria. Bokassa's I mean, efforts in the I'm pretty sure this means he's very highly decorated, right? Like, there is a lot of shit in here. I don't know military stuff, but I'm pretty sure this means he's pretty high ranked, right? French army would earn him awards, medals, as well as yeah. French nationality. Bokassa would often boast of his achievements in the French army, and on multiple occasions, he was quoted as saying that he was above all things, a French soldier and a friend of France. But rather ironically, it was his so-called friend Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, the very same man that had sponsored his coronation, that would bring an end to his 13-year stint as oh. the leader of the Central African Republic. Just two years after his grand coronation, Jean Bedel Bokassa was forced out of power and former president David Dako was reinstated in a military coup which was allegedly backed by the Giscard d'Estaing administration. Regardless of the deep-seated psychological issues that influence his behavior, it is very hard to defend the actions of Jean Bedel Bokassa. But nevertheless, his story will always serve as an illustration of why the next generation of African leaders must adopt a <laughs> new and authentic shit? mindset. Wait, did he do anything? Besides, you know, spend most Once of the again, cash on the coronation? For new Africa. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content That's like this, cool. then please help support our growth by liking and sharing this video and also subscribing to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash new Africa. Thanks again for all your support and until next time. This is every rapper when they get their first recording contract. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, a quick thank you to all the Patreons and YouTube members. Uh, so what do you guys think? Should we check out some more... Uh, some more... Uh, dictators, some more stories about crazy dictators. Uh, just from watching this video, I realized that I actually don't know anything about dictators. So what do you think? Should we check out some more? And if so, tell me what and whom, okay? Anyway, see y'all. Have a nice day, everybody. Oh, by the way, we're starting some Yakuza today, so come join me for that if you want. Bye-bye.